Summer is approaching and tens of thousands of Kiwis flock to the seaside to engage in the nation's favorite pastime, getting a sandy ass crack. But beaches are more than simply a place to exfoliate one's buttocks. Around the world and throughout history, beaches have played a role in the everyday lives of millions. Join me as I look at the human race's relationship to these sandy shores and I try to answer the question, what's the point of beaches? Recreation, a defining feature of sapien species, is the act of doing things just for fun. This woman is surfing. By positioning herself where the waves begin to rise and break, she is able to catch a ride. She stands up on a long wooden board, waits for the right moment, and with a hearty cowabunga, she's off. Oh shit, oh shit, I've got it, look, look mum, look, look, oh fuck. This woman is not surfing. Despite being at the beach, she is choosing to slide down a sand dune on a snowboard. Not only is she a total wuss, but she's also contributing to coastal erosion, one of many forms of ecological damage that we cause in the pursuit of fun. And this is why we at the Playing Silly Buggers office would like to remind you that the end is coming. Global warming is a runaway process, and unless we make an effort now, within five years we'll be living in underwater habitats, and nobody wants that. And this brings us to our sponsor. Recycling. Put your stuff in the right bin or we'll punch you in the face. Nourishment. A key driver of behavior in the natural world is the sourcing, hunting for, and cultivation of food. And oceans have always been prized for their abundance, containing many food sources high in protein that rarely fight back. A local supply of fresh ingredients has led to coastal regions developing unique cuisines, including the world famous fish and chips. But now, these once rich resources are dwindling. In 1985, the majority of raw ingredients supplied to fish and chip shops across the country were provided by small fishing vessels. The New Zealand ocean potato has long been prized for its use in kitchens and handily comes pre-salted. However, despite laws that ban the capture and transport of underdeveloped potatoes and wild caught chips, a 2014 study shows that commercial overchipping has resulted in a population drop of a staggering 80%. Creation, the act of taking one thing and turning it into another. While many construction materials can be messy and difficult to work with, the sand that forms most beaches around the world is ideal for small-scale projects. These people have brought towels and food to create a small home away from home. Using overpriced buckets and spades, they're attempting to revive ancient European ways of life. It's clear that beach holidays are now the only place where white people can engage in the traditions of building castles and staking claims to land that doesn't belong to them. And the problems don't end there. All human settlements around the world have one thing in common. A need for waste management. Even the tiny people who inhabit these temporary dwellings need plumbing. And yet, there's always poop. There's, there's always poop. People think it's cat poop, but it's not. People think it's rabbit poop, nope. It's tiny sand castle inhabiting human poop. Right there on the sand. You can see it. I can see it. So why is there poop? And who's trusting children to build these important pieces of infrastructure? There's no plumbing. There are no outhouses or long drops. It truly is a tragedy. 
speeches are a huge privilege and a massive responsibility. So we must ask, do we really need them? Let's visit a country where they've done away with beaches altogether. Ireland. Ah, put on your kilt and come on down to Ireland. It's time for a welly of a time. You may think you know about beaches, but let me tell you something, pal. You didn't know a bloody thing. So let's go. Hey, no, stop. Fucking leave the mic. No, hey, fucking wait. Fucking. Hey guys, it's me. Um, sorry about this. Producer John has just told me that apparently, um, apparently that accent's not Irish and apparently it's really offensive, which, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's Irish. I think he's wrong, but, uh, yep, so here we are. Um, we're just gonna do the rest of it in a different accent because, yeah, fuck it. Okay, let's go. Okay, so when God was sitting up Ireland, he was pretty fucking tired. He'd just done Fiji in Australia, and he was pretty low on sand after doing the Sahara. So he turned to the other big boys and was like, should we, should we do beaches here or nah? And Jesus was like, nah. Allah was like, nah. But it was like, eh. And it makes sense, right? Beaches are tricky. It's a transition, tran transition, transit, tr it's a space where stuff changes from one thing to another, from land to ocean and it's tough to make that work you gotta order in the seagulls ship in some sand get some salt sprinkled in the air you got tropical trees around so people know it's a beach and not just a shitty sad corner of a river you gotta get ice cream stands hot dogs you gotta get metal detectorists and then you gotta schedule those occasional shark attacks to keep it trending on social media it's not easy so in ireland god said fuck it and instead of a smooth transition between land and ocean, <coughs> cliffs, tall, imposing, immovable, surrounded by the freezing cold and violent Atlantic waters that made Gandalf shit himself, the coast of Ireland is an extreme example of erosion. Known in some circles as vertical beaches, these rocky formations may appear dangerous and inhospitable, and they are. Some hardy species of birds attempt to eke out a living in this environment, but the scientific community has long understood the evolutionary cul-de-sac that these creatures have found themselves in. Much like the sexually frustrated panda, their inevitable extinction garners little sympathy. While life on the slope is tough, this difficult terrain has notable benefits for those who live at the top. And in Ireland, the loudest and most notable of these species, and one that's long enjoyed this natural protection, is the human genus Homo gingus. From the siege of Troy, to the allied invasion of Normandy, to the droid attack on the Wookiees, beaches have seen more conflict throughout history than any other geographical feature. Let's take a look at their effectiveness. Armies arrive in boats, slam down the landing ramps, and pour out onto the sand, ready for a gentle stroll up to the shore and an easy rumble with Johnny Foreigner. When faced with cliffs, however, that romantic stroll across the sand becomes something else entirely. So, What's the point of beaches, and are they worth your time? Usually at this point, we'd sum things up, give you a conclusion, and deliver on the promise we made in the introduction to give you a clear answer. But that's, uh, that's not going to happen, really. I could say, well, if you like beautiful views, connecting with nature, and face planting into the sand, then beaches are lovely. If you like getting invaded on a regular basis, practicing colonialism, and eating delicious beach snacks, go right ahead. But all I can really say is that we rate beaches a 7 out of 10. Give them a shot, and once you've softened up that bum skin, had your food stolen by a seagull, and trodden in somebody else's poo, you can come home, sit in comfort, and relax with some more YouTube.